The kids up front, you guys are like, how did this happen to us? <laughs> yeah, oh, tiene que ver la cara tu carajito. Están como sufriendo, diablo, dame una bachata o algo. Tiene que mejorar esta vagina de una vez. So, um, I figured we would open it up and let's chat, yeah? Um, yeah? Mm -hmm. Vamos a tener una conversación. Mm. Madame. My yeah. God, I so can relate to you because I came here when I was eight as well. And um, yo hablo muy bien los dos idiomas, inglés y español. So I'm really, really proud of you. And I, I, I love the book. I, I'll be honest, I haven't finished it yet. Don't worry, no testing. <laughs> um, it was actually um, suggested to me by a co-worker who only speaks English. So yeah. it's like, here she is telling me, once I started reading the pronouns, I'm like, are you serious? It's so fun. So thank you very much. I really, really can connect and relate to your voice and your life, actually. No, you're very kind. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Los muchachos que se queman en high school son los muchachos que son genios en la universidad. 
Y a veces uno tiene que dar esa oportunidad. Y cuando un muchacho llega a una escuela, yo siempre digo que le tiene que impulsar a ese muchacho, no pensar en esa escuela como que ya, yo llegué y me voy a, me voy a quedar aquí. Porque el mundo es grande, man, y hay muchísimas oportunidades. Entonces yo no estaba diciendo que el estilo, la estrategia de Obama, fue que Obama entró a una universidad y después el próximo año, ¿verdad? Trató de buscar una mejor, y después el próximo año otra mejor, y otra y otra. Y así es como una escalera. And certainly that was one of the things that helped me an enormous amount. Especially the young kids here who are going to think about going to college. Guys, man, I always say the first application to college is what someone said to you. Your second application is how you fight back. Yeah? I First year I applied to Rutgers, I was rejected. And I went to a community college. And then I said, I'm going to apply again. Most of us, we take a rejection from college as like a permanent thing. Little people who are all going to go to college, you are going to college. I'll see you at Princeton. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to apply at least, I always tell you, if you don't apply at least twice, it's a, it's a wrap. You've got to apply at least twice. Keep pushing. You get into one place, next year apply the next place. Madame. Hi. Um I'm a, I work in a school, I'm a teacher in this community, and sometimes I feel like the testing constrains our curriculum and there's a lack of outlets for creativity. So what are things you think that parents can do or even teachers to foster their creativity and let, let them get that creativity in, uh, let out? Yeah, no, that's a great question about how the testing, all the sort of official testing, you know, this whole like, You've got to make sure to cover all these kind of classes and all this material. It limits children's access to creativity. It li limits their access to the arts. I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, somebody ran a statistic that children in the 80s had like three times more exposure to the art than children in 2010. So more or less, your average public school child is getting no exposure to arts. And you wonder why they be hating school. I always thought of like school as like you know, your punishment, your vegetable, and art as like your dessert, you know? <laughs> School with no art, that's insufferable now. And so I think that the thing is, is that as parents, it, of course it pushes us and as educators to have to come up with imaginative ways to figure it out, to make an end run against this limitation. You know, in the end, what it means is that like, I always encourage my friends at their public schools in Boston is that the parents have to form little art groups that they've got to take turns they've got to form like a little art group of seven or eight of them and one parent each week takes the group of kids to see a museum to see an art show to see a sculpture to see a dance and each parent will go every two months you know because without these kind of creative solutions we're going to get clowned y entonces estoy diciendo que la, eh, es verdad que en muchísimas de las escuelas la primera cosa que ellos cortan son los artes que cuando yo era niño había mucho más arte en la escuela que ahora ahora mira tú tienes que estar en una escuela buenísima porque tus muchachos tuyos tienen verdad que tienen maestros que les están enseñando arte en una manera como sabe interesante y yo estoy diciendo que para un carajito en escuela escuela es aburrísimo si no hay arte las escuelas son medio insoportables si no hay arte, entonces ahora mismo eso significa que el cargo le cae encima de los padres, ¿verdad? Que tienen que buscar la manera de llevar o traer a los muchachos a conocer el arte. Entonces yo les dije, a, a, cuando yo lo aconsejo a mi amigo, yo digo, mira, vamos a tener como un grupito, ¿verdad? Que cada semana, cada uh, padre tiene que llevar a los muchachos a ver... ¿verdad? a un museo, a ver una vaina de danza, a ver una cuestión de, de pintura, y así los muchachos pueden saber conocer el arte de un chin. Pero eso es lo que está pasando ahora, es que están cortando todos los programas, y eso significa que los padres que tienen que trabajar, ¿verdad? que también tienen que bregar con la cuestión de la casa, que tienen que pelear con su pareja, ¿verdad? que también tiene que tener una vida personal, porque un padre no puede vivir solamente de su hijo. Encima de eso, estamos diciendo que, diablo, también tú tienes que meterte, dedicarte a, a, a llevar el arte a los muchachos. Eso es muy difícil, pero imagínate, no, ahora mismo no hay otra opción. Things have gotten so difficult that 
the reality is, if you're not a rich person or you're not in like an amazing charter school, you basically got to work like a dog so that your child gets the kind of exposure that other children, privileged children, get for free. And it's like heartbreaking. You know, I mean, it's absolutely heartbreaking. But you know, sometimes we gotta suck it up for a few years just to give them that limited, limited exposure. There was another hand in the back, madam. Um, I also teach high school, and thinking of your experience as, as a high school student who had very little interest in being in the school, and then going to the school, if you can possibly take yourself back to that moment in your life, what would have, I guess, made the difference? What would have made you or helped you to get up in the morning and go to class? I mean, I know I'm not saying that. Sure. You know, I, sure, it's a good question. You, you were able to overcome, but the, unfortunately, for the majority of a lot of my students, they don't have, for whatever reason, that belief in themselves that will keep them pushing through. I think it's a problem, Dan. No, thank you. So, what, what would have made you, I guess, yeah, wake up? You know, well, you woke up. What would have made you just walk out the door and say, stay home? But that's a tough question, because I always tell people, especially adults, I always say, remember that person you love the most and broke your heart? Yeah. yeah? Remember that person you love the absolute most and then broke your heart? And then rem remember how useful and productive you were the six months after your heart was broken. Yeah? Many kids are in school and they're getting their hearts broken for many different reasons. And then we expect them to be kicking ass in school. The fact of the matter is, sometimes when your heart breaks, there is nothing that's going to put you back on track. Yeah? And sometimes it's your parents who break your heart. Sometimes it's your friends. Sometimes it's life. And I think that it's hard for us to accept that sometimes a kid just got to go through it and mourn. But the problem is, is that school, they run school like a stopwatch. If you don't do it in a certain amount of time, you're the worst student who's ever lived. That's not very human. You know, many and many of our young kids are getting their hearts broken and then we're expecting them to take tests. I was a kid whose father ran off the same year that my older brother, who was only like a year older than me, we were basically twins, got cancer. There was no teacher in the world who was gonna keep me from being a dysfunctional heartbreak through my senior years. Well, I was also in a school system where they can't imagine that children might have the kind of difficulties that they need a lot more time than just the time allotted. And so I think for me, it's less what can anyone done and more to sort of enhance the idea of our compassion towards our children. I mean, the one thing our school systems have outside of the wonderful teachers and the wonderful administrators, besides those people, this is not a system with a lot of compassion. And we have very sensitive kids, man. I mean, Angel, you know, they want to tell us that we don't have sensitive kids. Our kids are incredibly sensitive, you guys. Incredibly sensitive. I mean, you spend any time with our children, you suddenly realize that Man, they are, I mean, the only reason kids act tough is because they're protecting something very delicate inside. Who acts tougher than the black Latino community? I don't know any community who acts tougher than us, besides maybe some communities at war. And I'm like, these kids are acting so tough because they're protecting something incredibly delicate. So.